the message of this week's episode is life's not always what it's cracked up to be. We think of things in our head, we think it can go a certain way, and then when we get those things that we are wanting or pursuing, they're not as always satisfying as we'd like them to be. And I've learned that sometimes in the pursuit of these things that we want, we neglect other things and do things we shouldn't do, I guess. I'll explain. So this week, I got a new phone, everybody. I got a new phone. I'm back in the, not quite future, present day. Back up with the times, have a mobile device. I can be contacted basically anywhere on God's green earth. That's amazing. So happy. No longer have to use the iPod 5 because my iPhone died. Where's the other one? And at one point, I had to carry around two Apple devices with me. And from this new phone, I'm, I'm first, I'm so glad I have a new phone. It's amazing. I have a phone that works, and that's what you need to live life. But when I got my new phone, I quickly realized something. That something was missing, or that it just didn't feel as sweet as I thought it was going to. You know, I was out without a phone for about 10 days or so, and I was really discombobulated was the word I used a lot when I was talking to people about it. It was just so hard to get my ducks in a row, but also... I feel like I'm just making up that complaint because when you don't have a phone, it was easy, so easy to complain about that. So easy to get upset about it and tell everybody, oh, I don't have a phone. And then be like, how, you don't have a phone, what? And then you just tell them and it's so easy because nobody has, everybody has a phone. So you're the odd man out. And I realized since I've gotten this new phone that it doesn't solve all your problems. I was thinking when I was building up to getting this phone, like, oh my God, I get this new phone. I'm going to get all the new apps. going to have all these new features. It's going to be fast. It's going to be smooth. And it is all of those things. But I was also thinking, oh, I'm just going to get my life together. Basically, my new phone is going to fix all of my problems in my life and everything is going to be wonderful. And I haven't felt that at all. I haven't logged into very many things on my phone other than my social media accounts because I've had trouble doing so. I've had to have some sort of contact, some sort of complex login where I need a code or something. And it's been so not what I cracked up to be. Basically, back to the message of the episode. It's been a letdown of sorts, we'll say. And when coordinating getting this new phone, I was through my dad. My dad was contacting T-Mobile to get these new phones because one, my had died. Also, we were due for upgrades and they were having these all deals. A whole bunch of th things all directed towards getting us new phones. And it took a while. It was a long process. But my dad, with hard work and patience, he got through it and got us all new phones. And it's lovely. And I appreciate him so much for that. And thank you very much, dad. I love you very much. Appreciate it. But during that process, because I didn't have a phone and everybody else had a phone, and I felt like the odd man out and I couldn't really communicate with anybody. I couldn't even text my dad because I couldn't text anybody that had an Android device. I couldn't communicate with the one man that really knew what was going on with my phone. And I felt just like very stuck out to dry, hung out to dry. And that's not true. That's not what actually happened. That's not the way it went. That's just how I perceived it in the time. And that has come to frustrate me. Because I was so caught up in getting my new phone and wanting my new phone and wanting my life to be in order, I was, I don't know if neg neglecting is that word, but ignoring the things that the other people around me have to deal with. Like my dad having to deal with T-Mobile, make all these calls, get everything organized, try and somehow put four phones in one location, then dish them out to everybody. It was a process. And I got too stuck in what I wanted that I neglected the fact about what they were doing and what they had going on. And even when I got when, when to go get my phone or the process of getting my phone, I was being a whole bitch about it. I was saying, can you drop it off my house? Can you drop it off me in my here? I'm at work because I was at work. I couldn't meet them at the right time to get the phone. And my brother needed a piece of paper that was in my car. And then when I got there, I saw them after I worked on Friday and I got the phone. And I remember when I asked about the phone, I was like, Where's my phone? And I had this like little grin on my face. Of, of course I was happy to get my new phone, but my grin, it felt like I had ulterior motives. And I got the paper from my brother. We did the handoff. I hung out with them for a couple minutes and then I left. But as soon as I left meeting with them, me and my dad, them is my dad and my brother at Hooters of all places. I felt 
kind of empty. I had my new phone. It wasn't set up yet, but I had my new phone. I was in the new world. The, the, the prophecy had been fulfilled. God had smiled down upon me. And all peace was brought to my world. But I felt just kind of empty a little bit. And I sat there on the way home. I was just thinking. It's about a 25, 30 minute drive. I was just thinking. Like, my dad and my brother were there. They, my dad drove down to Indianapolis to give me my brother and my, our new phones. Um, to see us. To, to hook them up. To hook us up. And I went there. I was difficult with them trying to find me, me and get my phone. When I went to go meet them. I was mainly focused on just getting my phone, not really focused on them or what they were doing or how they were feeling. And I just felt gross afterwards. I just felt like I, what was I doing? My, my, my dad and my brother were both in town. I was getting to see them both. And they were, we were there was big football games going on. We could just chill at Hooters, and ate some wings, you know, kick back, learn about what their, what's going on in their lives, how they're feeling, how, what are their problems that they're dealing with right now. But I chose not to. I was self-centered and I focused on my phone and what I had going on. And I don't like that. I don't, I don't like that I did that. Uh, just a poor decision. Just, I should be more sympathetic. Looking back at my college experience, we're changing pace here a little bit. The time when I was like the best version of me, at least so I think, was the first, first semester of my sophomore year. And I remember, if I think back to my mindset at the time, my mindset was so focused on the other people around me. Because I had worked my first summer at our family bar and I had just been like, you deal with all the customers and it just makes you this certain kind of social butterfly because you have to be. And then I went back to school with that similar mindset. And for like the first two months of school, I was a ray of sunshine. And you can ask anybody in my life at that time and I will almost guarantee that they will say that same thing. I was a ray of sunshine to all my friends at school. I was meeting new people. I was being, I was, I was asking them about them. I was listening to what they had to say, giving them feedback on what they had to say, focusing on them but recently, I've started to realize I'm focusing a lot more on me and not in a good way. I mean, in a, it stemmed from a good way because this semester I've been working a lot more on like professional work and that's, that's me. That's me taking step forward, steps forward in my life. But it's come at a cost. I've, I've begun, begun to ignore the other things around me and that's a thing I can't afford to do. And I've chalked it up to, oh, I don't have the patience for this. Oh, I have, I have too many things going on. I, I've already struggled with my own problems so I can't deal with their problems. And there's truth to that. There's truth to that, but it's not a get out of jail free card by any means. And I need to make that adjustment, I think. I, every week I say I need to make a change or an adjustment and then it gets so tired and I just like, it, it's like a, it, it's not stigmatized, but it's just like, it doesn't mean anything anymore. And I'm not really acting on all of these things. <sighs> Frustration. And that kind of brings me back up to what it, it's not, it's not what it's cracked up to be. I would think this podcast would be so positive. I would do these things. I would set these goals for myself and I would get them done. And it has done that because it's made me somewhat more accountable for my actions. But also at the same time, I've used it as an excuse to vent my problems and just kind of bitch about what goes on in my life. And that's not an entertaining podcast. And also it's probably not good for me to do that because I should be focused more on those around me, what's going on around me, what I can learn from the people around me. I live in a house with six girls. Going into it, I thought it was going to be an interesting experience, but a good one. I was going to hate it. Mm, maybe I'm right. I was going to thought it would be funny going into it, hate it while I was in it, but look back on it as a positive experience. And as I just say that out loud now, I realize that that is exactly true, and that was my prediction. So far, I have been, a, I've become a grouch in this house, and it's kind of a general life thing, and I think that's why I'm getting this overall message. I mean, it's, it's catching up with me. I live with six people, but I have been so antisocial with nearly all of them. And since Thanksgiving, I've tried to do a better job of being nice and social in the house, but it's been difficult. And my presence in the house just feels negative. I don't know if that's because of my perception or because of their perception or all of the above, but I, <sighs> to be frank, I've been frustrated with the person that I've been for the past month or two. And I don't know what it is. Sometimes if I change up my look a little bit, it helps change my mindset, but my haircut hasn't really changed anything. I've been somewhat taking this experience in the house for granted. I need to do those things that I said, be more focused on people around me. I need to listen to them more rather than worrying about myself because I always keep things to myself. That's just what I do. 
So why can't I keep doing that and ask people about other people? I'll feel better about myself. I'll feel like I'm doing good things, being a better friend, being a better roommate, being all of those things. Like when I get asked a question in this house about like, how was my day or how was work? I get annoyed. And that's, that feels so toxic and gross. They're just asking about me. They're there. It, sometimes it seems fake. I will say that. But in general, they're asking about me because they want to know. If somebody's, somebody's not going to ask you, I would think, not going to ask you a question they don't want to know the answer to. But I get annoyed by it. What? What kind of, like, what are you, wh why? Just chill out, bro. It's not that deep. This is what I'm saying. I've been really frustrated. It's been a bit too negative, so let's change the pace a little bit to what is the positive of this? What can we take out of this? What is What can we learn from these things? And I was thinking about it before I started this podcast about what I was... What would be the positive takeaway? What's the lesson to take out of this? And I struggled for a second, but I think it might be don't undervalue the small things, I guess. It's not all about you still struggling for a message out of life's not always what you make it. So make it what you can. That's probably pretty good. Life's not always what you make it. So make it what you can, meaning... No matter what cards you're dealt, whether you expect something and it's not what it is or not what it turns out to be or not what you expected it was or what not what somebody would told you it was going to be. And this could mean for anything. It could be for a relationship. It could be for a store, for a restaurant, for a job, for life, for anything. Make of it what you can. And I'm not the first person to ever say this. I'm not making a profound statement here, but I'm trying to, in my head, bring it to a T and make it have a meaning to me, have a direction, have a... Have a next step because you can complain about what you want, but if you, you should probably think about it and try and do something about it because then what the fuck? Sorry for my language. So if you are put in a position where something's not what you expected, it's not as great as you thought it was going to be. You thought it was going to solve all of your problems. It was going to make your life so much better all in one place. Bring everything out. Like I thought with my phone and it's not what it turns out to be. It's not as satisfying. It's not as sweet. It's not as perfect. It's not as amazing. You got to just take that. You just got to swallow it and you got to just make of it what you can. I am picking, nitpicking all of these problems with my new phone, but I got a new phone before I had this phone. I didn't have a phone that worked at all. It literally did not work. I was using an iPod that I could only use when I had Wi-Fi. So if I was out and about, nobody could contact me. But now I have a functioning working phone that came out this year. It's brand new. No scratches, no nothing, perfectly well kept and everything. And I'm still finding something to complain about. And I wonder why I've been down and upset with where I've been at and, and the version of Malibu Stein I am right now. Any chance I get, I'm finding something to complain about. Oh, dude. And if I saw somebody else doing that in my life, I'm critical of that. I'm like, ugh. Ugh. And that was one of my complaints to my roommate Jenna recently, like this semester. I thought she was, I, I remember saying that to one of my friends, like, oh, I can't, like, I just, I've had a talk with Jenna because she's complaining about all these things, but I'm doing that exact same thing. You always, okay. Here's another life lesson that I did not learn myself. I found, I've heard from other people, but, um, perhaps if you're complaining about something or cr being critical of other Think about the fact that maybe you are being critical of the things that you see in yourself that you don't like about yourself and projecting them on the other person. That is definitely true. And it's something I've really struggled with recently. And I think that kind of completes the whole picture a little bit. I've been negative. I've been allowing myself to be overly negative or nitpicky, I guess. Not even extremely negative. Just nitpicky. Complain about things when there's a chance to complain about them. And that's gross, in my opinion. It's gross. And my phone was like the peak of this mountain, kind of. I kept complaining about it to every person I could. Oh, I don't have a phone. I can't do this. I can't do that. Oh, I can't be contacted. And I was trying to contact my dad through my siblings, pestering them. Hey, when's my phone going to get here? Hey, when's my phone going to get here? When in reality, I could have just sat and wait patiently. And it would, the same amount of time would have gone by. The same things would have happened. 
and I would have gotten my phone and I would have been patient about it and probably not have overhyped it and thought it would solve all my problems and I wouldn't have been disappointed minorly when I got it. Life is tough. But it's also what you make it. And I hope we've come full circle here to a bit, bit of a positive note. Still trying to get that guest on this podcast. <laughs> for, for some reason, I can't. And again, I... I don't know what I'm doing with this podcast, dude. I have no idea what's going on anymore. I used to talk about cool historical things that I thought was interesting. Now I'm just talking about myself, trying to make it like life lessons. Am I preaching? Am I a preacher? Am I trying to be a motivational speaker? I'm just a senior sports media major who goes to Butler. I came from a small town, youngest of three, raised Catholic who now doesn't believe in God and is chilling with life and trying to work, have a job in sports in some way, somehow. Hmm. Life is what you make it, ladies and gentlemen. So make it good. If you can. Mm. Okay. I think that's going to be it for this week's podcast. Hopefully it wasn't too much complaining. Hopefully the edit made it interesting as well. Um, also, I'm sitting like, down the whole time. So I got back problems. That's good. Uh, also, I hope the quality was better. Do I look pretty? Can you see, can you see all of the details of my face? Am I, hello? Hopefully we'll have a guest next week. I don't know. Okay. I've been your host, Matthew B. Stein. You've been fantastic as always. And I'll see you next week for another episode of the Procrastinate Podcast. Episode 68 in the books. See you next week for a very special episode. Peace out.